I hope everyone's doing well. Thank you for joining me for this video. I am Mistrish. We're looking here at the comparison of these two compounds. Which one is more basic? Cyclohexylamine and benzenamine. It's also called aniline. You can write it out as this. A-N-I-L-I-N-E. Aniline. This right here, benzenamine, this E is optional. Some books you'll remove it and some books you'll have it. But it'll be attached to that word, benzenamine. That E, in some areas you'll see it, in some areas you won't see it, but it's also called aniline. Which of these two is more basic? Consider this, if you're looking here at a amine group, or NH2, this is your amine group, if you were to look at it in the presence of a water, if you can protonate this and make it RNH3+, the ease by which this is protonated will indicate or give an indication of how basic this is. If this is easily protonated to give you an ammonium ion, then it's quite basic. If it's difficult, if there's a difficulty in protonating this amine here, your organic amine, and it's difficult to do this and generate this, then it's less basic and it's slightly more acidic or maybe neutral. The ease by which this reaction can occur is an indication of the basicity of that compound you're looking at. Back to the question, which of these is more basic, cyclohexylamine or Benzene, I mean, you can look at it in two ways. Number one, the hybridization of carbon. And which carbon are we talking about? Right here. This carbon right here and this carbon right here. When you look at the cyclohexylamine, what type of carbon do you have? I'll show you right over here. You're looking here at a CH and then here's the rest of your cyclohexane, but then you're looking at NH2 and you have two lone pair of electrons. This carbon here is sp3 hybridized. Everything is a single bond, everything is sigma bond as you know. When you focus right here at this carbon right over here, what type do you have? You have a double bond here, you have a single bond here, then you have your NH2 and your lone pair of electrons. This carbon here is sp2 hybridized because you have a pi bond coming into play. Look at the difference. An sp3 carbon versus an sp2. Here you're looking at an sp3 carbon here you have an sp2. So what you have to remember is this very important fact and I'll list it out for you. Your fact you want to remember is this. The sp2 carbon is more electron withdrawing than sp3. What does that mean? It's giving you an indication of electronegativity. This carbon over here which is sp2 is electronegative compared to this sp3 carbon. Therefore you're looking at a, a dipole in the direction of the carbon. Here you're looking at a dipole in the direction away from carbon. And because of this electronegativity of this carbon, you can imagine that these two lone pair of electrons are less available for protonation because of their relative electron donating aspect of this carbon because it's sp3, then these lone pair of electrons on the amine group are more available for protonation. So that reaction can occur better as I showed you RNH2 in the presence of water you can have this RNH3 plus form, the protonation. If the protonation reaction is easy, then you're looking at something which is more basic. The protonation reaction here is easier because this carbon here is more electropositive. It's making these lone pair of electrons more available for protonation. This carbon is electronegative because it's sp2 hybridized. These electrons are not available for that protonation. Then you can, by extension, consider this very important fact and I'll put it out for you, though it's not relevant to this, but keep this. The sp carbon would be more acidic than an sp2 carbon, which would be more acidic than an sp3. You know you'll see this in something with a triple bond. When you're looking here at an acetylene, where you have HC, triple bond C, then C, and let's put here NH2, an amino group. This carbon here is sp, so it's very electronegative or electron withdrawing, and it's sucking more of this. So this right here would be even less basic than something which is this, which is sp2, which will be even less basic than something like this, which is sp3. So this is giving an indication of acidity right here in this direction. But this right here is giving you an indication of basicity in this direction, so you keep that in mind. A nitrogen or an amino group attached to an sp3 carbon is more available or more able to donate its lone pair of electrons for protonation, therefore it's more basic. You're looking at basicity in this direction, you're looking at acidity in this direction. So this was point number one. Point number two will bring us to an end. Look at the difference between these two molecules right here. You have a cyclohexane, here you have a benzene, where you have a bunch of sp2 hybridized carbons and you know you have pi clouds of electrons. Here you don't have anything like that. You can have resonance stabilization, here you don't have. Here you can have delocalization of electrons, here you don't because there's no such thing as resonance going on over here. 
when you have a resonance stabilization and let's make it clear effect you will lose out on the ability to make your lone pair of electrons available for protonation. The rule you want to remember is this, due to resonance stabilization effect and the presence of these sp2 hybridized orbitals, pi cloud of electrons, the lone pair of electrons on your nitrogen or your amino group are less available for protonation, which means it will be less basic. The resonance diminishes the ability to donate that because these electrons, rather than going and donating and being for protonation, they want to participate in resonance stabilization. Because these, these are less available for protonation, they will participate. And this is a part two of the rule you want to remember. Because of resonance stabilization, these lone pair of electrons will want to participate in this resonance. And I can show you what a resonance would look like for this compound over here. And let me show you what the resonance stabilization would look like. Here you have it, here you won't have it. And this is what it would be. You have your, these two lone pair of electrons, they want to participate in this benzene ring resonance. And this is how they'll do it. They'll come down over here and they'll form a double bond. These two electrons will form a double bond here with that carbon and you will have something which will look like this. Here you've developed that double bond. This bond will shuffle over here, this bond will shuffle over here, this bond will shuffle right here at this vertex. So this double bond over here will now come over here, this double bond over here will come over here, and what was this double bond over here? It will generate a negative charge over here, but by virtue of the double bond here, you'll have a positive charge over here. And you see you have a neutral compound here, you have a neutral compound here, but you've got resonance stabilization. These electrons have now participated in resonance, so they're not available for protonation, so they cannot be involved in basic reactions. They are involving themselves in the molecule in terms of delocalization. Delocalization of electrons in terms of resonance. These two electrons which are lone and available have become part of your resonance system and they're no longer available for basic reactions. Which of these is more basic? This right here is more basic. SP3 carbon, no resonance stabilization. These electrons are available for interaction in terms of basic reactions and they can be involved in protonation as you can see right over here. These electrons here are going to participate in resonance and you have an SP2 carbon which is relatively negative and it's sucking the electron density towards itself. And that right there is the end of this video. Thank you.